Welcome to Concord Baptist Church Bible study. Amen. Yep. Amen. Good evening. Let's see if we can get Thomasilla to pray for us. I'm several <laughs> Grace and Apollos, I want to thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for loving kindness, mercy, grace. Thank you for bringing people in tonight, Lord, to come to hear from you. And Lord, I pray for the ones that are still traveling, coming. I pray for travel mercy for them. And I just pray that people come ready to hear from you and receive your word. And we have some sick ones around, Lord. I just pray that you'll touch them and heal them, Lord, and do a mighty work in their life. And be sure to give you praise, honor, and glory. In the holy precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 The others aren't here by the time we get done singing. Then you'll have to sit through another message because I'm going to give them another one. Amen. 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 I like it. We'll teach them. We'll teach him about being late. Amen. Amen. I was just saying earlier to the folks here about LeBron James saying that he's tired of these black people getting killed all the time by these police officers. Well, have you ever noticed that it's black people that are breaking the law? I mean, if they weren't out there doing something wrong, and if they would stop when they're told to stop, we're told to obey every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Uh, if they weren't out there doing their dirt, I mean, here they are today trying to make a hero out of the other young man that just had a child, uh, as far as I know, out of wedlock, 20 years old. He was so excited about his son and everything. Well, then what the heck were you doing? What you? Why were you doing what you were doing? Amen. I mean, it's time people start standing up against this junk. How much have you heard about the black former NFL football player that killed that doctor in York, South Carolina, and his children, grandchildren? Huh? How many know their names? How's it been blasted? Where's the march in there? Huh? We got a march. Huh? Where's the march? Yeah. We got a march. We need a White Lives Matter so I can get a $1.4 million home. Hey, yes. Amen. But I mean, listen, it's it, it's just not. I mean, here, how about the, the ones that have been mugged? How about the Asian man that was beat up uh, in New York? How about the old folks where the, these guys, black fellas, by the way, running up and sucker punching them from behind? Cheap shots. Where, where's all... Where's all that on the news about how these are victims and somebody standing up for these people? You know, I'm not racist. I just don't like black, brown. No, <laughs> I'm <only> joking. <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of ridiculous anymore. I'm so sick of hearing it. Amen. Man. I think we ought to take them off if they're. How about the, all the cops that have been shot this year? How about the ones that have been ambushed? Anybody know their names? Their lives don't matter. Their lives don't matter. All lives matter. And then I've got people that I know out there trying to stand up for this stuff that, you know, people are racist if you don't agree with a bunch of – anyway, a bunch of them – Running around, act like monkeys. Amen. Amen. All right, Tim, what are we singing? Oh, dear. I ain't your dear. <laughs> we'll just sing one a day, though, Vic. All right. It's easy and simple. Amen. I'll fly away. Where's that? It's in the phone. Right. Number 11. Number 11. Josh! Come on, Tim. Woohoo! Symbol! You guys are lucky. If you got here after we were done singing, we was going to make you sit through a second sermon. No, 11's B I B L E. Tommy. 11. Oh, 
Royal telephone. Yeah, this one here. I'll slam that with a hammer. All right. Yeah. Oh. I got a cow leg like right there. It's annoying. Trying to cross. Okay, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Someone start me off. Sunday morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home, not celestial shore. I'll fly away. Get the one out of the van. Out of the van. This a new date or something? There ought to be six inches between you. Yeah, for Lord. It's good for a man not to touch a woman, the Bible says. <laughs> Put a Bible between them. That's right. I got it. Hold on. Sit down. Sit down. I used to talk to young people about. The girls and the guys hanging on each other, holding hands, walking along. And I said, uh, what happens when that when you're walking along holding a young girl's hand? Get Yours sweaty. gets sweaty. Your heart starts racing. Your mind starts racing. Same thing with the girls. You bet? Yeah, we've been around a while. Amen. I see these young girls and some of my own family members, and I don't know why their parents allow it, but they're wearing these short shorts, and they run over and jump and sit on some guy's lap. Like, it, it doesn't bother me, you liar. I'll tell you what. 
if a young girl in a pair of short shorts sits on your lap and you're wearing shorts and it don't bother you, you're either a queer or a liar. <laughs> Amen. Pastor said Romans what chapter? 13. Romans 13. Thank you. Amen. I said amen. Amen. <laughs> you know what gets me these days? These young men and women that they got their wedding plans set for next February and they've been shacked up for three years, but they're fiancés. <laughs> fiancés. There's a lot more going on if you're shacked up with some dude for three years before you get married. Amen. I've seen them where they've had babies and they say, yeah, we're getting married next year. The kid's two years old already. What's going on? Does that sound normal? Does that sound moral? Now, I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking about professing Christians. Amen. So you got to keep your eye on them. Especially that one. You got to keep your eye on her. Yep. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you're here tonight, because if you weren't here, I wouldn't be here. Matter of fact, maybe it's not a good thing you're here. I could have been home in bed. <laughs> Amen. Good, great. Anyway, lately in the news, you hear about all these shootings. You see all the unrest, you see the riots, you see all this garbage. All that is is set up is to take down the United States. They want to change our Constitution. They want to make us communists, socialists. Amen. It seems to me that when I was growing up, I was, I hate to use the word because it's not a very good word. God doesn't like the word pride, but I was proud to be an American when I was lost and growing up. Amen. I watched the John Wayne movies. I wanted to be a Marine. Amen. I did all that. When I was 14, I was working a job pumping fuel at night and going to school during the day. Amen. The generation we have today, I'm sorry to say, is sorry. <laughs> when I was 21, I was already married, my wife with child, and already bought a, a two-family home. I was a landlord. Amen. At 21, I was working, I was working three jobs then. I worked rotating shift for American Cyanamid Corporation. When I wasn't working the rotating shift, I was working for a trucking company. And on weekends, I was doing my own work on the side. So I could buy nice things for my wife. Amen. <laughs> but you look, at, you look at folks today that are 20, 21 years old, and they have no, I guess, ambition. They've got no direction. Amen. Now, I started out when I was about 12 years old thinking about what I wanted to do. My dad was a trucker, and I wanted to be a trucker, but I wasn't old enough yet. So, in our family, my dad was pretty wild, and he liked to drink at the time. This is before he got saved, and he gambled and everything else, and it seems like we were moving every six months. I don't know how many states we lived in, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, and then we start over again. Amen. And uh, so I said, I didn't want that for my family when I get married. And uh, so I took every job I could get. And I, want, I, I thought about this when I was 14. I said, when I'm old enough, I want to be able to buy a house for my family. So I said, what I'll do, because the only way I knew how to do it at the time, because I didn't know any better, I said, I'm going to go in the Marine Corps. 
And when I get out, I'll have my VA benefits and I'll buy a house and then I'll work until I can get into trucking. Amen. And so that's what we did. But we had a plan even at that young age. We wanted to do a little bit better than what our parents were doing. Now, my son wanted to do a little bit, bit better than I did. Amen. I was gone for 15 years, really, on the road. Didn't see them grow up that much. Amen. The only vacation they really got was when they jumped in the truck with Mama and Tabitha and Frankie and the Doberman, and we'd head to California. Amen. <laughs> but today, you look at young people, and it seems like they have no, I guess, no plan for their life. But here's one thing, if you get this part right, the rest will fall into place, and that's being born again. You get saved. There's a lot of people that profess to be saved. They go for a little while, then they, uh, for a better, or a lack of a better term, they fall away. Then they try to come back, and then they fall away. Then they want to rededicate. My dad wanted to rededicate his life after 40 years of drinking and cussing and fighting and gambling and whoring around. <laughs> and I had to tell my dad, I said, dad, you don't need to rededicate. You need to get regenerate Titus chapter three, verse five. And eventually, you know why he felt that way? Because being the son of a deacon at a Mennonite church and going off to kids camp, Christian camp, somebody getting you to pray a prayer he thought he was all right just uh backslid well you have to slide up before you can slide back amen and the problem today with most folks is they don't even know why they need to be born again they don't even need they don't even know why they need a savior they think because they do some bad things they're going to hell and if they do good things they're going to heaven Let me ask you a question. I bet you can't figure this one out. Why is a pig laying in the mud? Because he's a pig. <laughs> huh? Cool him off. Because it's his nature. To cool him off? Who said that? I did. Josh over here. You deal with a lot of pigs? No, I like used to work on a farm. Worked on a farm? Well, yeah, but they're both right. Pigs do lay in the mud because they don't have sweat glands and they use that to cool themselves. But the other reason is because they're a pig. Cats don't lay in the mud to get cool, do they? They clean themselves. All right. So, why do you commit sin? Because you are a sinner. Let somebody else answer. That's my point. You already know all the answers. You've heard them. <laughs> The question was, why do we commit sin? Because we have a sin nature. Very good, Derek. And to believe that sin nature, you have to be reborn again to receive God. And if you accept God in your life. To receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and to make peace with God. Every person that's ever been born after Adam was born... S-I-N positive. Amen. Born with bad blood. You got bad blood. I hear people talk all the time. Well, our family, are we come from uh, blue bloods. Now, you're still a filthy sinner just like I am. Amen. You got the same rotten blood in me that I have. So, uppity, upper crust. You know what upper crust is? That's a bunch of crumbs held together by their dough. <laughs> <laughs> but we have that sin nature that we were born with. So, this question. Who taught you to lie? Yourself. You did? You have a sin conscience. Your conscience, no, basically 
You know what? I, 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 I perceive that you have listened to a few sermons here. <laughs> well, so what... <laughs> but has it done you any good? <laughs> have you received it? Has it stopped your cursing? Look, has it stopped your to, rap? I'm trying, to, I'm trying not to cuss, but it's hard. Okay. Now, see, here's the thing. When you get born again, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you get a new nature. Now, the pig lays in the mud because that's his nature. If we gave him the heart of a cat, would he lay in the mud? No. 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 What do cats want to do? Wow. Well. <laughs> Amen. So here's Sam, the pig. And he goes down to the mud hole and sees his old friends down there. And they say, come on in, Sam. The mud's fine. He says, no, I don't do that anymore. Oh, come on, Sam. What are you, holier than thou? Wow. Well. No, I just don't do that anymore. <laughs> Amen. So when you get born again, you get that new nature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. See, that's the difference of truly being born again and just having a head knowledge of religion. You can repeat everything I've ever preached in here. You can put it right in line. But if it's never been made personal to you, it's not doing you any good. If it hasn't changed you, it's not doing you any good. Because you're still on your way to hell. And the purpose of being born again is to make peace with God so we could have fellowship with him and to keep us out of this place called hell. You know, when you get saved, you don't really want to run with the same crowd because you don't want to be around it. And you'll, you'll love your friends and you'll try to tell them what Jesus did for you because you love them now. You, you really do care about your friends. You know, there's very few people in life that you can call a real friend. Amen. But Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But who would empty their pocket for you? In other words, who would give you all their money so you could have a little better time to, you know, tonight or tomorrow? Not many, is there? No, why? Because they're looking out for themselves. If, if you were in a jam and you needed, you needed the money, and you needed the money, would they give you every dime they had to help you out of your situation? You see, how many people are what we really call true friends? But you'll care enough about them that you'll go to them and you'll try to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ because you care about where they're going to go. And if they don't receive it, they're going to get away from you because they're going to think you a holy roller nut. First thing I did, I went to my best friends and, and, and tried to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ and they didn't want nothing to do with me. They, one of them died and went to hell. But I tried. Their blood won't be on my hands. You see, so nobody taught us how to lie. We knew how because it was our nature. Who teaches a pig how to lay in the mud? It's his nature. Who teaches you to, to lie or rebel against your parents? Or to do things you shouldn't do. It's your nature. Now some parents. they uh, Even the best of them. That have done what the Bible said. Have beat you with a rod. I'm not talking about abuse. It says beat them with a rod. It will not kill them. You shall deliver their soul from hell. I'm not talking about getting you in the corner. And beating you down in the corner. I'm talking about the little fleshly part. That God gave you. To sit upon. It's not there just to sit upon. <laughs> Amen. Now, I know there's families and that where children are abused. Amen. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the biblical way. When it says beat them with a rod, it won't kill them. He's not talking about abuse. He's talking about there. <laughs> Amen. And it's for your own good. But even the best parent that could do that and follow that precisely. You're still going to get try to get away with things that you know you're not supposed to do. Hey, I was the best. At, I mean, 
I could act in front of people like I was the greatest kid in the neighborhood. But my mom and dad knew better. <laughs> I remember when I was real little, we lived in Norwalk, Ohio, and my mom was upset at me about something. I was running from her, and I got down by the road in the ditch, and she quit chasing me, and I was sitting there laughing at her. And she says, you just wait till your dad gets home. Oh, oh. uh-oh. It wasn't so funny anymore. <laughs> See, all the things, all the wicked things you do, things you do in secret that you don't think nobody knows about. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He said that the night is like noonday to him. So all those things that are running through your mind, he knows your mind. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. And you're going to still do things that you know are wrong. As long as you're lost, you get saved. You're try to, going to try to change. You know, I actually believe that my son would not lie to me. I did. I thought my son, I said, uh, we were tight. I loved him. I said, I said, I didn't think my, my son would lie to me. Till one day I found out he will. <laughs> and you know how he got caught? He was going to airport and he was in body, body shop. And he had his brother-in-law's 350 Datsun with a 350 souped up Chevrolet engine in it with automatic transmission. And he had it primered up and had the wind in the back taped off with newspaper, getting ready to paint. And there's a boy that lived up the street that went to school with him. His name was uh, Ronnie Boyd. He had a new 6'5 Mustang. Now, this car is so fast that you could pull out down here at that stop sign to turn uphill. And before you got to where they built this new house, you'd be running 55 or 60. So, on the way home from school, they decided to race each other. My son passed a car on a double yellow, and the cop got him. He come home, he said, oh, Dad, I got a ticket. For what? Passing on a double yellow. What are you talking about? This woman in front of me, she was just kept, old woman, she just kept hitting the brakes and everything, and about caused that, and I had to whip around her. I said, all right, son, no problem. You know, I've done that. And I said, we'll just pay the ticket. But I waited a little too late to send the ticket in. And I get a phone call. Mr. Townsend, yeah, this is so-and-so from the South Carolina State Troopers. Uh -oh. I did your son a favor, and I cut him a break. And he didn't, he didn't show up in court, and he didn't put the, turn the ticket. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Ticket was sent in already. I said, what really happened? And then he told me the story. <laughs> My son came home from school that night. I said, come here, boy. <laughs> Dad, what did I do? He was 16. What did I do, Dad? <laughs> come here, boy. <laughs> and I throwed him down. <laughs> I said, boy, you ever lie to me again. And you know what? I got a little girl right there that I think the world of. And you know what? I, I, I actually think that she wouldn't lie to me. But I'm not that stupid anymore. <laughs> you know why? She's got a wicked sin nature just like my son has. And like I had. Amen. <laughs> Let us Don't say, let your women keep silent in the church. No. <laughs> you know, the only thing that's going to change that 
is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your conscience is God's law written in your heart. And every time you do some of those things, your own heart, your conscience tells you it's wrong. That's why you do it at night or you sneak around to do it. Because you already know it's wrong. But you know what? The more you hang around people that do the same thing you do, the less it bothers you and you don't think there's a problem with it anymore. You heard that old saying, birds of a feather flock together? Yep. If I was a drunk, I'd be hanging with a drunk. If I was a drug addict, I'd be hanging with the drug addicts. Why? Because we justify each other. If I'm a liar, I'm going to hang with liars. And the Bible says, by the way, all men are liars. And that includes women, too. Amen. <laughs> Do what? He said he's glad. We, he said that he's glad we ain't alone. <laughs> so that's because you were born with that sin nature. So why why are people going to hell? Not because they do bad things. They do bad things because they're already on their way to hell. And that's why the Bible says you must be born again. You have to be willing to take responsibility for what you are and what you've done. And you have to get honest with your own self and say what that Bible says about my nature and my sin is right. And I'm a sinner on my way to hell. But he says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. For he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but precious in the eyes of the Lord of the death of the saints. So God became what you are in the person of Jesus Christ. And everything I ever done was put on him. And everything you've ever done or ever will do is going to be put on the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you don't receive him as your savior, you're going to have to pay the penalty. And the penalty is death and hell. And then the lake of fire. Now, the world looks at us like we're crazy. I was a bunch of religious zealots. Do you know the Bible says that sin is pleasure for a season? Amen. I mean, isn't it pleasurable for a young man to have a young girl and go park somewhere? Yeah. Of course it is. Flesh loves flesh. And there's other things I could name. I've seen people act like they're helping some woman when really in their heart and mind, there's something else going on in their head. Amen. They might fool themselves, but they're not going to fool the Lord. Then it's pleasure for a season. But you know what happens to seasons? They change. They pass. <clears throat> so with that, let's look at Romans 13 real quick. Yeah. Sister Tam is on tonight, and she asked for prayer for Bill White's family. He passed away this evening. Bill White? Bill White. Right. His family. Grace Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for the White family. Lord, we ask you that you might console them, Lord, in their time of sorrow. Lord, that you be there for their in their time of need. And we pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Do it when they ask or you forget. <laughs> Especially when you get old. He's got a wife and kids. All right. Romans in chapter 13. Now look what this says. What I was saying earlier about these bunch of hooligans, doesn't matter what color they are, but most of them usually have the darker persuasion. Amen? If they weren't out there, if they would obey chapter 13 of Romans, we wouldn't have such a mess, would we? And look what it says. Let every soul be subject to unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power resists the ordinance of God. 
and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. So our rulers and the people out there that are in a place of authority, they're not a terror if you're doing good works, are they? Well, what if you're robbing and stealing and rioting and hurting other people? Well, they're going to be a terror to you. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's what our justice system was set up under in America. The laws of God. They used to have the Ten Commandments on the courtroom uh, walls when you walked in or outside. But they took them down. You know why? It's awful hard for a lawyer to walk in where it says thou shall not lie. <laughs> or the judge you know, where it says thou shall not commit adultery. Yeah. Or the covetous thou shall not covet. Amen. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And that there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you know that David, when David took Bathsheba, and had her husband killed after he got her pregnant. You know, when he was confronted by Nathan the prophet, when Nathan said there was a man that had one ewe lamb, and he loved that lamb and treated it like it was his child. And the ruler was going to have this feast, and he had plenty of lambs, and what he did was he went and took that one little ewe lamb. Boy, David was upset. He said, he shall surely die. And Nathan looked at him and said, thou art the man. And David was under deep conviction then. But you know what David prayed later? He said, Lord, against thee, thee only, have I done this sin in thy sight. He said, I sinned against you, Lord. So when you do wrong to others, you're sinning against God. Amen? So if you're not obeying the magistrates and the law, now there's some laws out here. We also have a verse that when we were preaching on the streets and they was locking us up, we had other preachers telling us we ought to obey every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake when we were out there just preaching. But in America, we had a constitution that said we had that right. So they forgot something. The Bible says it's better to obey God rather than man. If what you're doing is godly and it's what God commands, then they're wrong. And so we had to go to court. But you know how people tried to beat that? I remember my son-in-law and them when we was in court. They had a, wrote them up for preaching on the street without a permit, stuff like that. Well, they'd go in and argue the Constitution. One judge over here in Columbia says, if you bring up the Constitution one more time in my courtroom, I'm going to hold you in contempt. So the question the judge was asking, did you do this? Well, the answer is yes. 
So what you do is you go to court and you say, yes, I did that. Then you go challenge the ordinance. And that's how we beat it. Were you preaching on the street without a permit? Yes. Then you're guilty. Yes. Now, is the, constitu- is the permit constitution? constitutional? No. So there's times that you're going to go against public opinion if you're going to obey God. Amen. And that's the thing you need to remember. You might have to go against your own parents sometimes. What if your parents, so what if you, what if you got saved and your parents said, you're not going to church anymore? If I catch you at that church, I'm going to beat you. You know what you'd be better off doing? Taking the beating. Amen. Besides, what parent? wouldn't want you to hear the gospel and to live for Jesus. What, what saved parent? I say it that way. What saved parent? How about a husband? There was a woman. Husband said, you go to that church, I'm going to beat you. And back then you could beat your wife and they wouldn't turn you in. (laughs) And she'd take a beating, but she'd go to church. And you know what? By her good conversation, she eventually won her husband to the Lord. She took a stand, but it cost her. But it cost the Lord Jesus Christ to take a stand for you and I. Amen. Trouble is, we don't have folks that really read the Bible today or rightly divide it. Amen. Do you know how bad it is in the church today? We got a little bug there or something? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, the Bible says to preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, yeah. Don't interrupt them. Let them learn. Mm-hmm. He needs to hear the gospel too. <laughs> we'll kill him afterwards. <laughs> Unless he repents. <laughs> but here's the, here's the thing. Some of the big churches here in town, they had youth directors, youth pastors in the church. You know what they were? Sodomites. You know what they were doing? Taking advantage of the young kids. You remember that? Big church, independent Baptist. They had them at another church over there, Dunchapel. You see, what they'll do is because we're gullible, we want to believe everybody that wants to do good. And that's how they get into and subvert young people. And so that young person grows up and says, if that's Christianity, I don't need it. How many Roman Catholic altar boys didn't want nothing to do with God because of some sick priest? Amen. Stick with the Bible and obey it. Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth about them that fear him. Stand up for truth. And don't just kind of stagger through life. Make a plan for your life that includes God. Amen? Amen. Well, I've done all the damage I can do tonight. He's coming closer so he can hear you preach. Okay, what's that, porch monkey? It's a big one. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's a tarantula. Now running away. See what happens? If he would repent, he'd turn around and come this way. You got me messed up. Do you know what repentance is? What? It's a change of mind that leads to a change of direction. Oh, man. Repentance is you're going one way. You hear the gospel and you realize you're the sinner and you turn around and go to God through Jesus Christ. That's what salvation is. Amen. Yeah.
Did you hear what I just said? What's more important, that cockroach or somebody repenting and turning to God? All right, palmetto bug down here in the south. You know, we're dignified. We call them palmetto bugs. It's still an oversized cockroach. Amen. All right, well, Tommy, pray for us. Bless the food while you're at it. All right, here we go. God, let's pray. Pray so, Father, and thank you again for this day. Thank you for the ones that come tonight, Lord, and thank you for the message you gave the pastor to, to give to us, Lord. I just pray that people have received it or will receive it, Lord, and repent of the sin, Lord, that is just in all of us, Lord, and we're born with that sin nature, Lord. I just pray that, that people can see that so they can be reconciled back to God, Lord, and we'll thank you for that. Lord, I just pray for the food that we're about to receive. I pray you'll bless our bodies, our bodies for your service, and give us a safe ride home and a, a good fellowship while we eat, Lord, and we'll thank you for that. Holy precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, we just pray and ask these things. Amen. And also remember, when you get saved, that old...